Hello everybody, welcome to the stream today. This is our first match of VRML Sunday, always packed. Tons of games. And uh, yeah, we got one here between Team Gecko and Quackheads. Uh, Sir Dimwi joining me here in the booth for his 99th cast. Uh, how's it going? It is going good. And uh, not only is it our first uh, game of the day, it is uh, the first game for this Team Gecko here. Uh, this is their... Uh, VRML debut, and I believe it's a, a debut of a few of their players uh, in comp, generally speaking, as well. Uh, so, yeah, really excited to, to get this one going here. Of course, it's Team Gecko versus Quackheads. Uh, Gecko is a team of Not Kex, Multi, uh, Miola, and The Boss, although they are uh, missing Multi today. Uh, in place of Multi, they have Infiltrate. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, Infiltrate's been around. Ever for a popular while. sub. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, uh, I guess uh, Infiltrate may be uh, uh, the, the Rotitan of EU. <laughs> yeah, for, for those who don't get that, Rock's Titan. Uh, Rock's yes. Titan, of course. <laughs> but uh, All the love to Rock's Titan there. Absolutely. But, yeah, so for uh, for Team Gecko here, finally, after a, I guess, false start, perhaps yesterday we expected to see their debut, but there were some complications. They won't get too much into it. But ultimately, we do have our debut of Team Gecko here, and I'm excited. Finally, we get we get them uh, debuting again. We saw other new teams like Paradox in Europe debuting last week and having matches this week. Uh, we have Invictus and uh, debuting this week as well as Adrenaline. You uh, managed to cast that game from Adrenaline last night, and I know that was a pretty good debut for them. They didn't uh, complete the victory against Spaghetti, but they still impressed considering they are new and how good of a team Spaghetti is. So yeah, just another one of these new teams. This time for Europe, popping into the scene. Yeah, and they're going to be coming in here against uh, Quackheads, a team that's been around for a little bit, players that have been around for a little bit. Uh, it's uh, that team of uh, Gobshite, McGobshite, uh, Flash Flood, Irony Man, Middleman, and your mom. Uh, oh, mine? I was yes. just on the phone uh, with her. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're coming in with an MMR of 1180. The record's 6-6 six and six after a loss versus Jesters last Sunday. Uh, but as well, since then, they picked up two default Mercy wins uh, versus uh, WJHFTB and a Wasted Potential. Uh, so, yeah, they're coming in. You know, they're, they're wanting to uh, uh, get some action in as they did uh, have two, two of their uh, matchups over the last two weeks. Uh, kind of go to default wins for uh, teams kind of dropping out after the matchmaking happened. Uh, so, yeah, really excited to see them uh, get some action again here. And, again, a team uh, that, yeah, I don't really know what to expect uh, from Team Gecko. I don't know any of these guys except for Infiltrate. Uh, definitely seen Infiltrate around for a long, long while, mm -hmm. uh, just around in, in the game and in pubs and, and whatnot. But, yeah, really curious to see uh, what they're going to be coming out with here. Yeah, same here. Uh, all players are in the game. They have been pinged on the Discord unless I did something terribly wrong. But no, it looks like I have. So still waiting on them. We can go to the gameplay screen for you guys just to give you, I guess, something else to stare at for a moment. But uh, yeah, otherwise, there you go. We have Quackheads over on the blue side, Middleman82, Irony Man, Flash Flood, and Gobshite today. So unfortunately, we do not have the presence of my mom, as you said. But no, that is actually a rostered player, yes? So... <laughs> Yes, uh, yeah, your mom, 28. That's <laughs> just, just to clarify for the chat. Exact full this... name. Uh-oh. 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 Okay, good. I'm not the only... I, I must not be the only one. They saw it, too, because... <laughs> yeah, no, it looks like uh, not Kex uh, crashed there. He did. Uh, hopefully his team recognizes before they're ready, and indeed they do, so... Oh, seeing some... Uh, some, some uh, what, like, Iron Man comms, or... That's not the right term. Well, what does that sound like, uh... Like a voice changer type thing. I think it's just one of those audio errors. Sometimes you get, uh, depending on. What I think yeah. I think it's but... a new one. We've been seeing uh, it uh, a little more often lately. But uh, mostly, I'm pretty sure it's S users that are, are getting that one. I think it's something to do with a loose wire. Uh, oh, I know maybe. Guy Gilligan uh, the other night uh, was getting that. Yeah. So uh, I've noticed it a couple of times. Not not terribly often, but it's yeah one of those one of those things that you see from time to time. Kind of throws you off a little bit. But yeah. So. Uh, Hopefully get them back in soon, see this debut of Team Gecko. Again, we do have a, uh, well, as usual, rather busy schedule for the day. This is the only match for this particular hour, but in about 54 minutes, that's when we have the first North American game, as we mentioned earlier, Kangorillas and Illuminati. Obviously, that's going to be quite the, the hyped-up match, I think. Uh, I, I know Illuminati lately, they've had a few struggles in the recent weeks, but they're one of those teams that, 
just on, on any given game, we know they can catch that fire again and find their rhythm. And uh, it's not some, they're not a team you expect to see struggle for too long. It's, I think every team in general will have their lulls at times. For like Kangarillas, it was in the preseason, obviously. Uh, for teams like, you know, Infinite, it, it happened in the first couple uh, weeks. I mean, it's just, uh, yeah. that's how Ekarina goes. It's, it, no one usually stays on top forever, even throughout the course of a season, It'll, especially nowadays, where you'll just have these these trade-offs, you know, uh, streaks for streaks. Yeah, no, you expect them uh, to, to find their footing again. I mean, you don't become, excuse my phone, uh, you don't become the world champion, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the champion of your country or your region uh, without, you know, without being that good. For sure. And thanks, you also indirectly reminded me to mute mine. So, ha, we're good. Uh, Middleman, though, launching out here now, finally starting off here. Round one, 10 minutes on the clock, best of three, the debut of Team Gecko. And Gecko almost getting the save, but unfortunately for them, it's Gob with the re-grab and dunk. Yeah, it was a great save from the goalie there, but unfortunately Gob just uh, was able to get the grab back almost immediately. Put that one in for the two, so we'll be... Uh, it will be Quackets here getting the first, uh, first blood, drawing first blood here, 30 seconds in. Good start for them, uh, almost a good first save. I mean, I guess it technically was, but yeah. Uh, here on the offense now, it will be Team Gecko for the first time. Just gonna go for the rebounded goal, so back to back on the kind of rebounded plays. You know, I mean, that's what we want to see out of a new team here. Uh, you're you're kind of worried uh, when you don't know what to expect that maybe uh, it's going to be, you know, a little one-sided. But uh, 10 seconds it took uh, Team Gecko to get that goal in. Uh, so fantastic work there from those guys. Yeah, not Kex uh, getting the assist that looked like. Or, or they shot, but or rather it was kind of a self-assist if nothing else. So rebounding that one. And the first two points already, again, it's one of those situations where I'm kind of excited to see because I don't know these players too well on uh, Team Gecko. Just seeing what they are capable of over the course of uh, this match and over the weeks as we stream them. <laughs> what a steal there uh, from the boss. So, yeah, uh, some great defense we're seeing coming out here from Team Gecko in their uh, debut match. Yeah, and uh, Kex here taking this one away, trying to throw it on over to that wall. There's going to be contest heavily coming in. And actually, maybe fortunate because uh, the defense focus on the player instead of the disc. So they do allow Team Gecko to retain, send a pass up here to the corner and off the wall. So going on the offense now is the boss. Great pass, recognizing the open man on the nest. Backboard shot won't be had, though. And back to the wall. Yeah, he was looking to hit that the, the cone on the backboard there, just a little bit wide of it. Uh, yeah, had it hit the cone, that might have been uh, that might have been one seen to go in it. Oh, great steal there from Gob right on the bubble. And I'm going for a cross pass. A lot of strength on that one. We'll just go into the tunnel, but actually the stack was there. The unfortunate overshoot doesn't matter because Gob is right there for a grab back on it and gets his uh the disc right back as they go on offense here. Flash flood has it saved this time. Ooh. Infiltrate again. Yeah, well, uh, so what hands there? I mean, that's kind of a. Uh, infiltrate, uh, he's been a goalie for a long time, so he's got the experience to make the saves like that. But yeah, what a grab there from Infiltrate. Uh, my, uh, my, was that a no look? Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, good enough for it. Yeah, great grab. Uh, doing what he's been doing for weeks on end, if not the last almost two months now, really. Just uh, impressing on that end, on the sub end, obviously. Enjoying himself. You see him in these games just coming in and... No matter what team he's playing for, he's uh, had effective matches and stat lines. Oh, nice headbutt there from Gob, also getting stunned, but still butted the disc over. Uh, just enough to get the teammate, his teammate, the disc. Flash Flood now taking that one and going for some passes, but very close quarters combat going on at the moment. But now off a great pass to Gob, and he's just waiting down low. The goalie did dive, but just missed the catch. So it will be the fourth point here for Quackheads. Yeah, you know, infiltrate new gob was underneath him. New gob was open, so he was waiting for that pass to go off. And uh, so, he, so it was a good read uh, on infiltrate's part there. But yeah, not quick enough to actually intercept it, which uh, left the goal open there for Gob to put that one in for the two. That it did. And also want to say, as a, this disc actually gets taken, going to be at risk of a goal if uh, the boss, nice shield. So in fact, maybe going in for a move, but just grabbed by Irony Man and then by Gob, who gets the clear. Yeah, it's great, great bubble defense there uh, from those two uh, from Quackheads that are down in their own bubble. 
uh, able to send that one out. As uh, Now it takes a little bit for Gob to get there, but he's got the one-on-one, -on -one, excuse me, one-on-two, and he's able to walk that one in for the two there. Beautiful uh, uh, drive from Gob coming in one-on-two. Uh, no lack of confidence on his part there. None whatsoever. The veteran Gob with six points, all six points, in fact, for Quackheads. Great start for him. And, uh, okay, so as I was just saying, uh, before all that unfolded, see, I always have to pick up where I left off because the action, but I wanted to say hi to the Twitch that chat because already 26 people in there uh, to start off this day and a lot of people in the chat, so can't really give a bunch of shout-outs at the moment, obviously, but still glad to see you. Just the same, and they're glad to see that three for Team Gecko, not Kex, gets it. That right there, that is earned points here for Team Gecko. They force that turnover, stun the player out. Uh, not Kex gets away uh, with the disc, and uh, no hesitation, puts that one in for the three. And now uh, Team Gecko within one point here, halfway through round one. So keeping up right in there, uh, again for a new team to competitive at least, they're looking really uh, good, just competing with what are a bunch of veterans here for Quackheads. Uh, Quackheads now losing the disc to them, so maybe if they can get this clear and the, this boost on through, could have be taking a lead here in the last half of round one. But I take that back, because that shot is just going to undo everything I just said. Gobstrike continues to strike from deep, and that is all nine points now going in favor of Gob. Yeah, Gobstrike under pressure, uh, sees the empty goal, takes that shot 21 meters out, uh, and he puts it in right near that bullseye. It was a great shot there from Gob. He is feeling absolutely locked on right now, hitting everything, and now that uh, rollout here, a little off and results in Gob yet again with his hands on it, finds Flash Flood with another deep shot, but there is someone right in that lane. It's Infiltrate taking it away. Yeah, Infiltrate definitely uh, trying to play that back line a little bit more as we've seen uh, uh, an empty net goal now. And you know, as a goalie, when, uh, that, when you see an empty net go off, you, you get more conscious of uh, protecting that back line. Yeah, definitely. And uh, with 346 left, you know, as these clocks wind down, obviously, goals especially in a close game become all the more important uh, that deep one there you go infiltrate again this time hiding a little bit below uh, the vision perhaps to intercept it so infiltrates just squeezing past gob but not for very long his hands have just been all over the disc today whether it's on the intercepts the steals the shots i mean he is just uh, leading the way for quackheads trying to pave the way for a hook shot 11 points to five, and again, everything for Gobshite. Yeah, I mean, that was that was all Gob there. He, he makes that turnover right in front of, he forces that turnover right in front of the tube there, uh, sends it in deep, uh, then picks up his own rebound and then walks it in one-on-one -on, -one on the goalie there. Uh, definitely Gob making the case for himself uh, to be MVP of this series here. If nothing else, at least round one MVP. Uh, here's here's Middleman now with Flash Flood attached. Flash Flood breaking off for the pass. That's a nice play. Sent down to Irony Man, and someone else finally scores for Quackheads. And off what was a very beautiful series of grabs and passes. Yeah, that was fantastic chain work uh, there from, uh, I believe it was a Flash Flood and Middleman. Uh, as they came in there, uh, getting that, forcing that turnover right in the tube right after that initial pass from the quarterback. And then beautiful pass sequence to get it under the goal there to Irony Man put it in for the two. Uh, so a little bit of a missed pass perhaps, just too uh, fast for his uh, boosted player to get to. So now it'll be Irony Man taking it and getting it back to Gobshite. Better watch that goal. Looks like Infiltrate's already there. He, he knows that... Uh, cannot give away any more points. Granted, they do need to score here rather soon with only two minutes left, but instead it's middleman from the left side or underside of the goal, up by 10. That's unfortunate there. You had two players in the goal, meaning one could come out to attack, one could stay home and uh, protect from the shot, but instead, uh, it's just a miscommunication. Both goalies come out uh, together, leaving that goal open, open for that shot, and that shot is good for the two. And now uh, Quack heads up by 10 with just a minute and a half to go. So looking in great position here to take this first round from Gecko. Upsetting and spoiling their debut maybe a little bit, but obviously, you know, the, the first half of this game was really close. Uh, but Quackheads, that veteran experience, there's Middleman with a save. Probably the easiest one he'll get all day just because I, I can't help but say it, but every time, I mean, he gets the most difficult saves with so many uh, people in his face that anything that, that's not right up close is just going to be simple for a guy like him. But uh, now not Kex having it uh, 
well, dishing it rather, to Miola. Going for a hook shot, similar to that one that Gob took, but it's middleman again. And there he is right on cue with another save. Really looking yeah, good a, here. Sorry, that was a fantastic set there from a middleman on that from that hook shot. That was a that's definitely a hard one to make the grab on, but he made the grab there, and made it look easy. Yeah, so getting the defense worked in uh, in the last couple minutes. Uh, more of the players now. I think three players here for Quackheads now on the score sheet after for the, you know eight minutes. It was nothing but Gobshite shooting over Gob shoot is what I should call him. But over here it's the middle man taking the disc, looking for maybe one more play here on offense for his team as uh, the last 20 seconds unfold. Yeah, Gob shoot, Gob shot, Gob scores. Huh? <laughs> exactly, coming back for more. But there is a clear right down the floor. Infiltrate maybe this breakaway goal here if he can get there and indeed it will be as the clock just about expires. It's 15 to 8 round one uh, favoring Quackheads. Yeah, that was uh, well played there, particularly in the first half from Team Gecko. I mean, they, they showed some really good uh, uh, looks on defense, had a few good drives on the Quackheads goal. Uh, we'll go to stats right quick. I mean, uh, Gobshite picking up a Current game high points of 11. Also, game high uh, steals with five. Uh, that, as they say, that's not a couple, that is a few. Uh, but then two points apiece to uh, Middleman, Irony Man, and uh, three points to Infiltrate, two points apiece to uh, the boss, and uh, excuse me, three points to Not X. Uh, but also, notable Infiltrate picking up four saves uh, in this first round. Middleman with two there. We definitely saw those uh, saves play a role here in the game. Just go over to team stats right quick. You've got possession time. Very similar, 53% in favor of Quackheads here. Three, three minutes, 21 seconds versus two minutes, 56 seconds. Uh, and that, that definitely translates here. You can see shots taken, 10 shots uh, to Quackheads, seven shots to Team Gecko. So uh, otherwise, uh, a fairly close matchup here uh, between the two teams. We definitely saw Quackheads pull ahead uh, in the second half of that round one there. Uh, but definitely very excited to see what Team Gecko is going to be able to do here in round two. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, in the chat, too, I mean, Meatballers seeming to be impressed by uh, Gecko and supporting them and just saying holding up better than you thought. But, and yeah, that's one of those things, too. It's never – anytime there's a new team debuting, it doesn't even really matter the experience level so much. It's uh, – anytime you're going up against a team who already has established chemistry, it, it's by default going to be tougher to have anything go in for them. And right there, Flash Flood will go in for the first couple to open up this round. Only six seconds in. Yeah, Quackheads uh, wasting no time there. They want to, uh, uh, you know, when, when you score that quick off the initial joust there, that's just uh, uh, you're trying to establish your dominance and uh, maybe shake the other team up a little bit because that was that was six seconds it took for that goal there. Well done there from Quackheads. Just about as quick as uh, you can possibly make it. Those margins always closing here as people get faster and faster and more skilled at this game. It just... The, the quickness and, and scoring efficiency you see sometimes, especially with these jousts now. You're seeing more headbutt jousts that are actually super accurate. Uh, we got a crash, unfortunately. That is not going to be very good for Team Gecko here as they start off the second round. Uh, that was not Kex that went out. Uh, they're slowing down a little bit. Uh, obviously, you go to the next, uh, the rule is you go to the next goal or the, the 40 seconds there. So they are playing on uh, just a bit of a slowdown. I guess they're, they're giving. Uh, they're going to give Team Gecko a little time to, to get their player back because they pass this one down uh, pretty casually downfield here. Uh, looking like they will roll in for a goal. Maybe. No, it's just Infiltrate. We'll take that one right out of the hands of the Diver. Goes back, though, to the hands of Qu uh, Quackheads instead. They're still playing here with a, a one-man advantage. A couple minutes expire. Just bowed, and there's another punch on the goalie. Infiltrate couldn't save that one, but through no fault of his own, he tried. Yeah, and that's, uh, should expect a reset here, maybe. I do see them getting into the tubes, uh, but maybe we won't see that reset here as we are still missing, uh, it is not Kex at the moment. Quackhead's, uh, able to take advantage of that, the, the man down situation. Uh, Team Gecko coming out slowly, I gotta wonder if maybe, uh... uh no, yeah, I guess they were just gonna, sorry, excuse my, uh, pause there. I guess gonna, they were trying to play through, uh, not Kex just getting back into the game here, so they should be coming out here. Uh, full roster. Yeah, I can see all four players uh, entering the tube now. Yeah. Uh, so unfortunate though, is they're they're basically starting their game. Oh. Down by six. Hold on. Someone now flash flood. Maybe accidentally. I don't know. Switched to uh, the other side. So now 
whether they intended to or not, now uh, Quackheads will be down a man at least for the next uh, few seconds as he switched back to the other side. There he is. Uh, not sure what happened there. That was a weird minute and a half. <laughs> but anyway, we'll go back to Team Gecko and they'll have their opportunity to get back here on the scoreboard. Only down by six and a lot of time to spare. So hopefully they can uh, collect themselves after what was kind of a disarrayed first couple minutes. Behind the goal. Yeah, doing a good job of passing this one around, but I can't say uh, on the point of uh, what was that flash flood that uh, swapped teams from. I know when you come out of those uh, the, the spawn points, and if you're dragging your hands down, oh, what a grab there from Infiltrate to bring that one in for the two. Uh, is that one uh, initially got stolen and then bounced off the floor up to him? Yeah, got kind of slapped down to the floor. Just the fortunate bounce. You'll take those ones gladly. The floor assistant Infiltrate definitely knew what to do with it. So it will be two points, in fact, for Team Gecko. There's under seven minutes left. And I, yeah, I was just gonna say that uh, when you're when you're coming out of that spawn uh, that spawn point and you've got your hands kind of dangling just at your side, sometimes uh, your your finger will touch one of those buttons. And oh no, we see another drop here for Team Gecko. And uh, this time it looks like it is uh, is that Miola has now dropped. That is unfortunate here. Yeah, that that really is. All these uh dropping out uh, issues it seems like so far uh, just going to result in now a two from flash flood so six minutes left and eight to two lead uh couldn't quite hear what the players were saying there we're discussing discussing a restart i assume or uh, i missed it i forgot that i had the players muted from pre-game so i actually didn't hear it well it looks like no restart is happening but there was a comment made it was just a little too quiet for me to actually hear what they said Okay, so restart will oh, yeah, it looks like we're getting restarted. will happen just a bit late, I guess. Uh, so, no harm done there, but yeah, the just a few dropouts and team switches and things like that. <laughs> Odd start to this particular round, but uh, it's still within anyone's reach, obviously. It's, it's, it's also unfortunate for Team Gecko because. Uh, I mean, if these are game crashes, I know game crashes have been a little bit more frequent lately. I'm, I'm not going on a soapbox or anything here. I'm just uh, noting it. And if, if that is the, you know, if it is related to something like that, it's unfortunate that it just so happens uh, that Team Gecko is, is kind of getting the raw end of the stick there. Uh, particularly after, I mean, the, the, what they showed in round one, uh, the potential they, they had um, for, for mounting a, a good response here in round two and just, yeah, plagued by... Uh, player drops and, and, and you know, uh, from two different players. Uh, sometimes you'll see it the same player over and over, but no, here a second player. Uh, so, yeah, really, really sad to see here, particularly on their debut uh, in VRML. Yeah, it, it'll happen from time to time. I mean, it's, it's uh, just the nature of gaming in general, really. But trying to figure out their situation here, I was asked what, what the score was in the Discord chat. I'll just check for them the times and all that Who's stuff, too, right? for that matter. Eight to two is what they were wondering if it was. Let me see. I thought it was six to two, but I could be incorrect. Yeah, it looks. Let me see. Okay, yeah. So it was eight to two. Yes. Okay. So I can I can type that to them. There we go. We're good. Should be good. But yeah, so as you mentioned, they're looking pretty impressive there. I see Rock Tor in the chat said, uh, very true. If these guys play together and keep working, they'll be good. And I think so. Definitely. Uh, they're holding their, their own right now against uh, a veteran team in Quackheads. And uh, we mentioned the same thing, too. We saw kind of uh, with, with Team Adrenaline over in, in North America. They made their debut yesterday. We also saw they did have one sub, uh, Chuck Not Norris, and so we got to see his VRML debut, which was kind of exciting because Chuck is one of another one of those uh, longer time players, who's uh, very skilled and known for being, you know, a hot shot with a lot of great offensive uh, moves and, and pubs. But it was going to be uh, kind of intriguing to see what he did in VRML, and you know, even though Adrenaline didn't uh, win last night versus Spaghetti, they still definitely impressed. It wasn't a blowout. Uh, both. Both matches were within roughly 10 points or so, I believe. Both rounds, that is. Yeah, and, and Chef Not Norris actually signed up for uh, the sub. Like, he signed up to the subs list just for, uh, not j only for that game, uh, but because of that game. That was uh, what finally got him to sign up for that there. Uh, as uh, White Fox is looking for a sub uh, quite a bit early. Uh, put a call out in uh, some other channels 
Yeah. And, uh, Chuck on Norris uh, agreed to, to sign up for the subs, uh, for the URML subs list in order to, to play for them. So that was a uh, very cool kind of a, one of the advantages of if, if you believe you're, if you know, if you're on a team and you think there's a chance you're going to need a sub, even if you're not sure, like if you're like, it's a 50, 50, I mean, you can be forward about that and uh, start putting those feelers out early. Uh, you, you definitely are likely to get a broader response uh, with that kind of heads up for people. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, uh, Rocktor saying, Chuck is very top level material, just hasn't had a chance in the past. And uh, yeah, there's the case with like several players. I mean, uh, for instance, <clears throat> sorry, for instance, Haza or Haza, um, wherever you want to put the emphasis. My point of emphasis is the fact that he was another longtime player that, especially, I, I played a decent amount of either pubs and, and some private scrims back in like 2018. And he was always one of those players who I thought was one of the best uh, best players to just never play competitive. So I was uh, always interested in seeing, especially when I saw him join There Is No Team uh, over with you know, the Ready at Dawn devs there, Dave uh, and White Dragon, as well as Guy Gasm, Fair Enough, and Caption. I was interested in seeing how he performed. Uh, we had Oculus Later, another one of those guys, been around for a long time. Uh, he's on Skull Crusaders, and Oculus Later has been one of those players in, in North America who's been just honestly dominant for his team like his he's been putting on like lebron type stat lines basically uh and impressing leading you know skull crusaders to start uh, winning some games as of late now after what was otherwise a slow start yeah i love seeing a, a lot of these these faces from uh that we've seen around for a long time played with for a long time that are finally getting into comp uh and i think that has to do with uh, the fact that we, you know we kind of one uh how open the league substitutes uh roster is how easy it is to get on the league substitutes literally just signing up uh, on uh, that note i mean i mentioned this all over on uh, discord and to dimly earlier but yeah so we did obviously we had the the team gecko trying to debut yesterday but there was some um, a mix-ups and you know it got it got postponed but as a result now that stream because i kind of used the 30 minutes i was on that stream talking about the league and subs we, we got a bunch of new signups on the substitute list we were i think at maybe 38 39 before that stream, and as of right now, we're at 46 substitutes. So we had a solid six, seven, eight people sign up uh, <laughs> after that stream yesterday. And oh, it got reset into the middle, the disc that is. So that's, I guess, kind of common, honestly. But it looks like they might just play on it. Yeah, it looks like they are. And uh, uh, Team Gecko coming out with a uh, fire lit under their feet here, uh, trying to make something happen. And on, on the note, too, of subs, it also was discussing this. Kind of yesterday, but, you know, I, I want to see if we can get some of those substitutes. We have so many of them. I mean, if we can even get a few new teams worth, but honestly, I mean, we have enough for a, a full, what, 11 teams. Now, I know all of those won't be able to play, but I'm just thinking if we can get maybe an event at some point or some sort of substitute cup, I don't know. That's a lot of potential players there on the list just waiting to get their shot. Speaking of, it's Flash Flood getting the shot. 11-2 to two for Quackheads. Yeah, what a nice shot there from Flash Flood. Uh, bring it in from the feed from, uh, excuse me, Middleman there. Uh, 16 meters a second shot. Uh, not, not you know, A little bit of speed on it there to, to now bring it up by nine here halfway through this round two. Just starting to maybe pull away here off of uh, that tech break. Gobshite taking this away. He was the easy hot hand in round one. Uh, doling out the vast majority of the damage for his team, but right now it's Irony Man now raining it down from below, and now it's 13 for Quack. Yeah, Quack is uh, not wasting any time here after that break, uh, coming out very quick. I said, you know, uh, Team Gekka had a good look there uh, to start, but then yeah. Uh, Quackhead's very quickly running away with his lead here. Uh, Gecko's going to have to make something happen quickly here if they want to stay in it. So they are on offensive joust now, looking to do just that if they can. A few straight bounces and another crash. That has just uh, been the story of this round, unfortunately. Looks like, who was it this time? As uh, Miola gets the shot off of the wall rebound. So at least getting some points, even though it turned into a 3v4. Yeah, it was uh, unfortunately not Kex again. Uh, so first time is not Kex, second time is Miola, and third time now, uh, not Kex again. That is unfortunate here. Uh, so they, they're out of tech timeout to use their one. They're going to have to play on here, down by nine. They did get that goal, uh, so maybe uh, this will give them the uh, the inspiration needed to uh, to start getting some uh, some comeback here. 
Yeah, trying to make some headway, but obviously Infiltrate just trying to get in the way at the goal. So really in, in the outer bubble, is just going to be a two on three, two on four. But you know what? They still cause a turnover. So the, bo the Bossa getting a clear off a great grab, reading that passing lane, maybe buying his team an opportune time to, to score again, despite being down four to, or three to four on the uh, roster sheet. It looks like that might have been an attempt at a, a boot shot. He just kind of went off the popcorn block there. And cool, off cool. the well, sorry, barrier guys. into the hands of Flash Flood. So rebound and a shot just the same at this point, whether it's two or three, uh, any score is just going to increase that lead to the point where uh, it might be starting to uh, be the situations where we're seeing Quackheads really pull away. But obviously the number of situations is a tough part of that. No doubt we saw that much closer first round for the majority of it, but starting to pull away here for Quackheads. Uh, possibly again now with the, this three-point shot. Yeah, they, yeah, they were able to start to pull away here. Now up by 14, Quackheads. Uh, two, uh, we're going to have about, uh, yeah, just over two minutes once they're coming out of the tubes here. Uh, it's not out of reach yet for Team Gecko. Uh, they just got it, you know, um, well, yeah, still down by, uh, still down a man, unfortunately. Uh, maybe, it would it would uh, take yeah. a heroic effort for uh, them to come back, but it's still possible to score at the very least. I mean, uh, here they have the offense. Advantage. I hesitate to say advantage because of the numbers, but they do have the offensive advantage at the moment. And rolling in here towards that goal, we see a lot of uh, quackheads just kind of piling in around the, the bubble, the outer edge of it to deny. Oh, just losing the disc, but headbutting it back and actually maybe saving that play. Oh, uh, could not pave it for the goal because Middleman is there with another backboard denial. That's the kind of a mirror of what we saw earlier, and that is just a uh, classic Middleman. Yeah, it was a great grab from Middleman there. That, that that shot coming in from point blank, and that one goes just wide. Uh, and then another shot went off that backboard and just out of the reach of one of the players up above. It's now Gobshite's able to put that one in for the three. And uh, that just might be it here. That might seal the deal uh, mathematically. And uh, knowing, you know, Team Gecko out of the tech uh, timeouts, technically, uh, Maybe just yeah, conceding, waving a flag, not trying to get him back, or maybe he can't get back, I'm not sure. But with a minute left, it's pretty solidly now in the hands of Quackheads to take this in two. So not the debut perhaps that Team Gecko was looking for ultimately, but I think when you ignore this, the scoreboard and you just look at you know the eye test and the, also just observing what they did when they did have the full roster, I, I think they'll be just fine. They're looking very nice, so I, I'm impressed. Oh, same. I mean, when, when they were playing with that full roster, they had a lot of really good looks. They were putting up a lot of good contention, uh, particularly on defense, particularly around their own bubble. Uh, they showed a lot of good signs of uh, controlled passing, a lot of good looks on that, a lot of opportunities on offense. And yeah, uh, they just spend more time together as Middleman brings that in for the two. Uh, not only one point away from the Mercy, but there's only going to be about five seconds left. Uh, so probably not going to see the Mercy here. I mean, we still could, yeah, two seconds left. Uh, so yeah, that's probably the end of it here. But yeah, uh, they, I mean, really good looks here from Team Gecko. I'm really excited to see what they can do moving forward uh, into week seven. Absolutely. Um, meanwhile, though, for Quackheads, they're just happy to take this victory here. Again, not the second round that you ideally wanted, but uh, they still played hard uh, on Team Gecko. But Quackheads, yeah, coming away off what, again, what was a great uh, game from Gobshite. Only... One round's worth of stats here, and his teammates definitely started catching their own fire. But, uh, you know, he started, he ignited the fire that led them the rest of the way to this victory. Yeah, good game for everyone. Yeah, no, Gobshite definitely uh, setting setting the bar high uh, for his team to start this game. And, uh, uh, yeah, setting that early example for his teammates to follow. Uh, he's definitely the kind of player to do that kind of thing. Uh, definitely a leader. Um, as far as I've experienced with him, uh, he was one of the, my first – player coaches that I encountered uh, gave me a lot of tips early on and that's probably almost two years ago now uh, so yeah you know he's been around for a while he's definitely respected among the league oh yeah uh, definitely almost certainly respected among his teammates but then also you got to talk about middleman a little bit the, the performance he had in goal uh, the, the saves he made were absolutely phenomenal uh, and definitely played a role here in uh, these two vict uh, the victory yeah it's a frequent thing from him I know people who watch these casts I uh, cast uh, most of the European matches try to, and it, it's, I feel like a broken record, but uh, I always rave about middleman just because I don't think there's a single, I've seen a single match of his, and I've probably casted, I don't know, a dozen of their matches now, if 
not more, over the preseason and then season one. And uh, it, it's pretty much a constant. Every time, he's always getting at least a few just head-on saves where it's you know just him and the offensive player eyeing him down, and he'll just get that grab right out of the the, the goal at the last you know last second within a few feet of it. So he impresses on that end for sure. Um, and Quackheads as a whole, it's a team that continues to show their experience, their veterans, veterancy sticking together here and winning a game in very nice fashion for them. And uh, you know because of that, uh, Quackheads will advance now to a record of a uh, seven and six. So they do go back into the positives now. And uh, I'm sure they're feeling very positive about that. Oh, you know, yeah, that, that 500 uh, threshold uh, is, is, is com commonly referred to. Well, it's, uh, you know, but, but anyways, yeah, that, that threshold is, it's nice to uh, stay, you know, it's kind of where you want to be, even if you're, um, I don't know, if you're, if you're not fighting for that top spot, you're kind of fighting to be, uh, to, to maintain a winning record. Mm -hmm. And uh, so to, to pull that off, to get over that hurdle, to get over that hump, uh, is, is definitely something that, that you can uh, feel good about uh, no matter what team you're on. And, well, other teams we will be we will be seeing very soon uh, as we bring up the schedule here. It's going to be Kangorillas and Illuminati up next. Uh, that's occurring in another 23 minutes from now, so definitely uh, rejoin us here on this channel as we get set for that. That's going to be quite the hype match for multiple reasons. Not only top two top uh, teams in the world and in North America, but also... Uh, Sir Dimwi's 100th cast, so that's going to be fun in its own right. Uh, so congrats woo, to woo, him. Woo, woo. <laughs> yeah, what you said. I'm, I'm not going to try and woo. It's going to sound like like a like a frog's croak if I try right now. But <laughs> we'll have to take a swig of water before I attempt that. But I'll give you I'll give you a woo in the Kango stream. I'll, I'll promise you that much. Cool. A Ric Flair cool. woo, in fact. Anyway. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Those are. Uh... Uh, I'm expecting uh, I'm expecting a good Ric Flair woo because uh, you can't you know you can't pull out a Ric Flair woo without uh, uh, doing it properly. So I hope I hope you're not going to disappoint there. Well, expectations are set, and I'm ready to maybe deliver. Uh, but yeah, it's Kangaroo's Illuminati coming up in another 22 minutes. Throughout the rest of the day, we also have uh, Alpha Ducks and Vertigo. That's uh, still not for another couple hours, and then we have Adrenaline and Ignite, Genesis and Flare, Genesis versus Orbit, Guinness versus Deception. Legends versus Ignite, Six Foot Over versus Olympus, Invictus versus Ne Plus Ultra, and finally, Chaos versus There Is No Team. That was a long list, as is usually the case for these Sundays, but we're going to knock as much of these down as we can. We can already see we have Dimwi, Sputnik, Subtlety, and of course myself uh, at the moment at least guaranteed to get most, if not all, of these streamed if possible. So a big ma day of matches ahead, and I'm sure uh, plenty of people tuning in now. You know, not only the weekend, but people just staying home in general it's a it's a murky situation out there and I have, without any other sports to watch especially like or, or even you know places to go echo arena is where it's at now ladies and gentlemen do not panic a quarantine is in effect and on that note i'm, I'm still start a hashtag movement folks we're getting we're getting echo arena on espn or something <laughs> there's so many time slots to fill we're gonna do it i don't do know it. Ha hashtag do it. I, I, I think that's already used by a few different Just companies. Just do it! Oh, dear. I, I will. Uh, don't have to yell at me. Jeez. All right. Well, anyway. I, I was far enough away from my bike for that. <laughs> yeah, you're good. I mean, I'm a little frightened, but you're good. Um, but, yeah, so 20 minutes away. Uh, we'll just hit the credits here, I suppose, and we'll be back real soon. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you again at the top of the hour. Woo! Woo.